Welcome to our lecture online. Before we try to figure out, and of course we're not actually doing the figuring out, we're trying to look at the information that many very intelligent people before us tried to use to figure out how life began on the earth, we should get a little bit of an understanding the how the classification of life is done these days because it used to be done very differently. It was based on structural with what we could see without the microscope. Now, of course, understanding the DNA and understanding the relationships between all the various life forms, even the very primitive life forms, we actually have a very different kind of classification of life than we used to have. So now life in general is divided into bacteria, into the archaea, and into the eukarya. And you might wonder if you're not familiar with those terms, what do those things even mean? Well, the subclassification might help us a little bit. If you look at the eukarya, you can see that includes the entamoeba, the slime molds, the animals, the fungi, the plants, the ciliates, and the flagellates, the microsporidia, and the diplomonads. Now, we may not know what most of those things are, but we can recognize the words plants and animals. What other words? And fungi and molds and ciliates, well, at least some of the names sound a little bit familiar to most of us. Those are the more complex life forms that populate the world. And so you can see that this is where most of the life that we're familiar with, well, that's where it's combined into one category called the eukarya, the more complex life forms, if you want to call that. Then the other two branches are the bacteria and the archaea. And there is a lot of similarity between those two groups. All of these are very primitive, one-celled kind of structures. Now, bacteria, of course, most of us are familiar with those. Bacteria can be divided into good and bad bacteria, I guess, for us in common language and common life. We want to get rid of the bad bacteria and want the good bacteria. In our bodies, we have good bacteria that we need and depend on. And, of course, there's bad bacteria that can kill us. So there's all kinds of stuff, but those are very primitive life forms. And of course, we believe that at the very beginning, life started in terms of some of these very primitive life forms. Now, the difference between bacteria and archaea is that these are bacteria-like, although they have a different cellular type structure on the outside, and they are more resistant to extreme conditions. So if you take a look at some of these names where we have thermoproteus and thermoplasma, that would then associate that concept of what those things are with heat, thermo and heat. So these are kind of structures that are like bacteria that are very much more capable of existing in extreme conditions, where bacteria, of course, may be more more vulnerable to those extreme conditions. And also there's a basic difference between the structure of the walls that make up those, those, uh, uh, those bacteria. But again, what we're interested in is where life began. Of course, life began somewhere here and then developed into the additional life forms that now populate the world. And so what we want to do now is get a very good understanding of what this might have looked like. It looks like all these life forms contain a form of DNA. And the DNA is the code to the life structure that they belong to. And so these are very complicated structures that have enormous amount of information. And so the question is, how do we get from non-living material to this? And so something must have happened about three and a half billion years ago that started the formation of life on the earth. And so we want to make, we want to kind of get a feel of how we got from where we had no life on the earth, non-living materials into living materials. Well, how was that that bridge get gapped? And so that's what we're going to look at in just a little bit in the next several videos before we start thinking about life outside our earth and into the universe as well. So this is where it starts where we get kind of a feel of how it might have happened. So, is that one branch? Yeah, one branch. So we have the first branch here that goes into what we call the archaea and the eukarya. We're subdivided away from the bacteria. And what's archaea? What group is that? So the archaea group is where we split up into the eukarya and the archaea. The archaea group, and of course I don't want to gap there, the archaea group is kind of like bacteria-like, but they have different kind of walls, cell walls, and they have a, a propensity of being able to withstand extreme conditions where bacteria cannot. And then from that, we think split off all the other life forms that mostly populate the world, the larger structural life forms. So it seems like there's a lot of bacteria 
out there. So is there a lot of bacteria out there? As you asked, yes, there's tons of bacteria everywhere. Of course, it's microscopic. We don't see it, but we have bacteria all over our bodies, all over our skin, inside of our bodies, everywhere we go. There's tons and tons of bacteria. That is correct.